worship. Come, is, now is the time to worship. time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before Welcome to the Dawson Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Um, I am Terry Fletcher. I did not know I was going to be worship leader this morning. So uh, if Bill comes in, I'll be happy to trade with him. Uh, but until that time, you have me this morning. Uh, thank you to Karen Davis, who is filling in uh, for music. I did not catch our pianist's name this morning, but thank you for being here today. And we have a guest speaker this morning while Pastor Mike is out on vacation. This is uh, Jonathan Murphy. So. Thank you for everyone that is here this morning to help us um, with worship today. Uh, I think there are some announcements on the back of your bulletin. Um, Wednesday night, we do have our fellowship meal at 530. I do not know what the menu is, but Pastor Mike and Brittany are always wonderful to have dinner ready when we get here. So please come and join us at 530 uh, for dinner. And then we have our Bible study that starts about 615. We've been doing a... Uh, financial study that has been uh, wonderful. So even if you haven't been joining us, it is not too late to participate. So please feel free to join us. And then we exercise a little bit after that. So uh, after Mike and Brittany fix such a wonderful meal and we talk about our finances, then we might as well exercise our body a little bit as well too. So 7.15 is what time exercise group meets. Um, it looks like that on October 16th, which is next Sunday evening, we will have our committee meetings, the CE committee, the WME committee, and the session meeting. Session will all be meeting next Sunday night. Um, also, mark your calendars. As of right now, we are planning on having our Blessing Bazaar on Saturday, October 29th. That's just a few weeks away. That is... Um, a craft and vendor fair that we do here in our FLC. The proceeds from that do go to help uh, Teen Tennessee as we work on our missions for the summertime and we travel to Texas uh, to work with Camp Beloved and Beyond. So if you have a craft that you would like to sell or know someone that might be interested in participating, please see me after the worship. Does anyone have any other announcements this morning? Tony, do you have an announcement? Yes, that will be on that same weekend, on that Sunday night, the 30th. Um, yes, so Tony asked about our um, children's event, family event that we have for um, the Halloween season and fall season. So that is on that Sunday evening. More details will be coming um, probably next Sunday about that. We usually do a bonfire and a cookout depending on how the weather holds out and how much rain we get between now and then to um, dampen things a little bit. Any other announcements this morning? All right, if you'll join with me, we'll have our opening prayer. 
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could all come here this morning uh, to worship your name. We are so grateful for the many that are here filling some absences this morning so that people could travel and be with family and we just ask your blessings upon our worship service and that it will be meaningful and moving to our hearts in your name we pray amen our scripture reading this morning is from psalm 111 if you would like to turn with that i also did not bring my glasses up front so psalm 11 praise the lord I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprighteousness. He sent rede redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us stand now and join together in more worship through singing. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you will remain standing, we will have our song of worship, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing i'm standing on the on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. And if we have a child or two in the audience this morning, come on down for children's time.
please join in me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. You can switch the slide if you'd like. You can switch the slide if you want. Oh, you don't? Okay. Never mind, I'll just go ahead and pray, because I do not have it memorized. I'll be honest with y'all. Lord, we thank you so much that we can be here today. We pray that you would speak to our hearts. Let us hear you. Let Give us confidence to do what you call us to do today. And let, give us ears to listen so that we may hear you as we listen to the words you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, Pastor Mike did send me a message a few minutes ago and uh, asked if I would let the congregation know that Joyce is back in the hospital at St. Thomas West due to complications from uh, earlier when she had her pacemaker put in. So if you will um, just add that to your prayer list um, for this week. Here's our offertory thought for this morning. Tell the sons of Israel to raise a contribution for me from every man whose heart moves him, you shall raise my contribution. Let us join now with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Please be with our preacher as he delivers the message to us. Please accept these tithes and offers to better further your kingdom here on earth. Please be with Pastor Mike as he is traveling this weekend and make it back to us next week. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be reading from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am Jonathan Murphy. I am filling in for Pastor Mike. I am on pulpit supply for the Nashville Presbytery, so that means I am still learning, as I'm sure you could tell at this point. So bear with me a little bit, as I may mix my words a little bit. That is okay. So. If we are there in John 14, please join me, stand if you'd like, in the reading of God's word. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We do not know where you are going. How can we know? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. And before we go any farther, I would like to pray again. Lord, please use this morning to speak your words into our hearts. Give us courage to do what you ask us, and give us understanding to hear what you have for us today. Amen. Now, before we discuss what we just read, whenever I'm doing a study or preparing any sort of sermon or lesson, I like to look at what had happened before what we read. So before what we read, some of you may be familiar, Jesus was just telling his disciples that he was going to be portrayed and that he was going to die. And of course, the disciples were very confused by this. And Jesus even indirectly told them that Judas was, one, was the one that was going to betray him. So how does Peter respond to Jesus in this moment? Well, Peter being Peter that we know, he says, where are you going? Jesus, where am I go Where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow afterward. And G Peter says, why can I not follow you? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus' response to him, okay, will, will you? That's the kind of response that's paraphrased, of course. Will you lay down your life for me? That's the kind of response Jesus is giving. And he says, no, you will deny me three times. That must have stung quite a bit. So this is, this is what happened before this little conversation with the disciples. Okay? Knowing this helps me understand why Jesus is trying to comfort the disciples. Amen, Judah. That is my daughter, by the way. That is why Jesus starts off by saying, do not let your hearts be troubled, because he knows that their hearts are troubled. He could probably see it on their faces, let alone, you know, him being Jesus and God incarnate. He knows. He knows they're having a hard time. He knows they're struggling. So he is going on this conversation to comfort them. That's the whole point of this text, is to comfort, to provide comfort to the disciples. So what does Jesus tell them? In a nutshell, he says to believe in God and himself. So he tells the disciples to believe in him and to believe in God. And he's kind of reminding them that they are not being abandoned. And they, they do know what to do. And that he has told them these things before. Let's break it down a little bit. How is it comforting for God to tell them, for Jesus to tell them, believe in God and himself? Well, this is comforting because they have seen him perform miracles before. In fact, they probably most recently saw Lazarus being raised from the dead. So they would, they would know this because this just happened fairly recently. I don't know exact timeline, but this is pretty recently. Lazarus was raised from the dead. So he, they know that Jesus is capable of miraculous things. So he's reminding them to believe in him like they believe in God. Because he is God. And he says that he is coming back. He said, why would I say that I'm preparing a place for you if I didn't plan on coming back for you? This is a way to remind them that they're not being abandoned. And he also says, you know the way. And we see how Thomas responds to this. Thomas says, no, we don't. In my opinion, he's speaking for all the other disciples because they're probably thinking the same thing. No, we don't know the way. How can we know the way? That's kind of what Thomas is, is saying. He's like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, Jesus. What do you mean we know where you're going? 
how could we? That's what Thomas is kind of getting at. He's, he's like, he's lost and he's speaking up his concerns. So knowing this, another way of understanding what Thomas's question, he's trying to understand where, where to go, what to do, and how to do it when Jesus is gone. Because it feels like when Jesus is gone, there won't be any direction and he'll be lost and abandoned. Now, I'll be real with y'all. I'd feel pretty similar if I were Thomas. If I had left my livelihood like Thomas and the other disciples did, I would be pretty worried if my master was talking about going somewhere and that we couldn't follow him there. I would be worried and concerned because what are we going to do without you? That leadership's gone. I don't know if you've been in a situation without leadership, but it's not, it's not great. I'll tell you from my experience working at a fast food restaurant, if you don't have leadership, it's very chaotic. So I'm sure they felt even more worried and stressed about this because this wasn't a fast food restaurant. This was real life. This was everything to them. So how does Jesus respond to Thomas? Now we read, of course, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So in other words, to answer Thomas's questions that we brought up, he's saying, just do what I did. Say what I did. Live how I lived. Look at my life as an example, Thomas. Believe in me and you will know God. And you know God because you know me. You have seen God because you have seen me. That's the kind of answer Jesus is saying. Now, of course, it's worded differently right now in English because it's not the original language. But that's kind of the meaning that Jesus was getting at for Thomas. It's like, look, I know you have your concerns, but I am here and I have given you the answers already. So why does this matter to us today? Well, first, it helps give us context into what Jesus is talking about. And they serve as comfort, just as they would have comforted the hearts of the disciples. Knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life comforts me, because when I feel lost, I can look to him for guidance. When I'm in the dark, I, look, I can look to him to provide light. When I am unsure, I can look to him for the truth. Let's put our shelf in the shoes of the disciples. What would we do in a situation like this? How would we feel? How would we feel if our master, who we left our livelihoods for, said he was going to be gone and we couldn't follow him? How would we feel then? They probably thought that their master, in my opinion, was going to be gone forever. That's probably what they thought, and they were probably real scared about it. So knowing their fear and discomfort, Jesus reminded them that he will come back that they are not abandoned, and that they know the way. The way to life and the way to truth is through Jesus. When Jesus says, I am the way, I think of a path or a hiking trail. My daughter may try to say hello to you, by the way. She likes to walk around. 
So I think of a path or a hiking trail because a path, for example, is to lead us to a destination. And paths are important because they keep us going in the correct direction. That's what Jesus is laying out for the disciples. He's laying out a path for them, a way to follow, so that they can keep from becoming lost, so that we can not be lost. What happens when we diverge from the path or a trail or something? Well, we could get lost, we could run into danger, or we could get injured. So that's why Jesus is, that's the point of today, is Jesus is our path. He is our way. He is our truth. He is our light. So this reminds me of someone named Aaron Rouston. I may have mispronounced his last name, and I'm sorry if he did. This is the man who, he became trapped while climbing because a boulder fell and trapped his arm. And he escaped and survived because he ended up cutting off his arm and self-amputating his arm. So let's think about that situation real quick. He left without telling anyone where he was going. And he was also off, tra off trail. He was making his own trail of some kind. And then he became trapped. That's a very bad situation. I've never been in that situation, but it sounds rough. And he, in, in an interview I watched last night, he, he says that he knew early on in the situation that the only way out was to cut off his arm. But he didn't know how. He thought that he would surely die because the multi-tool he had, the two-inch multi-tool, was not cut out for the job. So he, he, he was just trying to figure something out. And he realized that he could, if he broke his arm, he could manage to escape. Now, the point of this, when he figured that out, he said he got ecstatic. Ecstatic to cut his arm off because he knew that was the only way for him to get out alive and back to his family. That path, that plan, gave him comfort and encouragement to go through those very, very painful things. So the point is, we ourselves, though I hope none of us find ourselves trapped by a boulder and have to self-amputate ourselves, I pray that that never happens to anyone. We still find ourselves in dire situations, in horrible situations, and unfortunately we feel lost, abandoned, trapped, or hopeless. So in these moments, what do we do? That's the point of the text for today, is we look to Jesus for the path, for the answer, for the guidance, and we go to him for it. And as Thomas pointed out for us, though, even though Jesus has told us before and most of us know the answers, yes, go to Jesus, go pray, read your Bible, be thankful, be grateful, we know those answers, but in those moments, we don't always remember. So we can find ourselves like Thomas saying, no, Lord, we don't know the way. How could we? And Jesus is there reminding us, you do know. I've given you an example with my life. Read it, use it. And so Jesus answers our questions the same way he answers Thomas's just answers them. He doesn't let us figure it out ourselves. He actually answers them. He's provided us the answers already. Sometimes we need reminders to look back where they are. He is our path. Jesus is our path through the wilderness. He is our guide and our protector. He is the way, the truth, and the life. 
When we feel lost, we can look to Him for guidance. When we are in the dark, we can look to Him to provide light. When we are unsure, we can look to Him for the truth. Amen. As humans, we need guidance in life. I get lost a lot. I get misdirected a lot. Even in traffic, I can get turned around. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. So we, we need to be honest with ourselves, and we need to be willing to ask God for that help, and we need to be willing to look for the answers that He already gave us. Look in the Word. Look at Jesus' life. Think of a child learning to walk, or one who has just recently learned how to walk, like my baby. Judah likes to walk and not look at her feet, as most babies do. Now, that leads to some problems if there's anything on the ground, or if there's a ledge. So Jesus does for us like we should as parents. We watch over our children as they walk to make sure when they're about to slip, when they're about to fall, when they're about to step off of a ledge, we're there to catch them when they do. Because we know they're going to at some point or another. So Judah loves to walk and she loves to explore, but she doesn't always look where she's going. Not at her feet, that is. So Jesus is there for us like I am there for my baby. And then some, of course, because his love is unending. Praise God for that, because I need all the love I can get. I want to share a scripture with you as we get close to ending today. Psalm 3, verses 3 through 5. You, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. That's who God is for us. That's who Jesus is for us. He is our way to get through these tough times that I know I'm not the only one who's gone through them. This year, last year, the year before that, the year before that, they have all been tough. Really, really tough for a lot of different reasons. And I encourage you today to look back to Jesus and look to Jesus for comfort. Because he is right here the whole time. And he wants to help us. And he will help us. Believe that he will. I invite you, if you need prayer, if you'd like to talk, or if you'd like to begin a relationship with Christ, please come see me after service. And now we can sing, Oh, How He Loves You and Me, number 513. Please stand as you are able.
trials and temptations.